in today's video we are going to be making a sparkly sequin witch's hat out of thrifted material. If DIY videos and Halloween costumes are something you are interested in, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below because I make tons and tons of videos about how to DIY things and also all kinds of spooky things for Halloween. If you guys wouldn't mind also magically switching that like button from white to blue to help the YouTube algorithm and also just to help me, it would mean so much to me and would also help turn this day more magical. So let's get into the video. This hat is so easy to make that it truthfully does not need a pattern, but I got a little bit of stage fright. So I'm using Simplicity's pattern 4136. And I'm going to use this pair of Forever 21 pants that would never, ever, ever fit me in this lifetime. But they had such a beautiful sheen to them. They also had a hole somewhere on them, which is why I ended up getting them for free at the thrift store. So I'm going to start cutting these pants apart so that I can find the areas that are the most flat so that I can lay out the pattern. I'm then placing the pattern so the top peak is actually in alignment with the side seam of the pants. And then I'm gonna take the extra material and put this together. Make sure if your material has a certain direction that it is going, that you follow the same direction. Anytime fabric has a sheen to it, you just wanna make sure that the sheens match so that way the lighting will reflect correctly and you won't have two things that visibly look different from each other. I'm then going to my sewing machine and I'm just going to do a straight stitch to lock all of the material in place. And then I'm gonna take it back over to my fabric and do the other side the same way. I'm not surging these seams. I'm going to use a fusible interface on the inside of the hat to give it a little bit more structure so that way when I place the hat on my head, it stands up nice and tall and pointy and doesn't just flop down because this pink material has absolutely no structure to it and is super floppy. And following the instructions, I'm going to iron down the fusible interface. You'll notice that fusible interfacing has two sides. It has a smooth side and then it has kind of a grippy side. The grippy side is the stickier side and that's what you want to put on your material because it's going to stick it down. Some sources say that you can iron this straight on, but I always like to use a spare piece of thin cotton just to make sure that the interface facing does not stick to my iron because I've had that happen before. Because I am making a super sparkly and fun witch's hat, I'm also going to grab this dress that was also I think a Forever 21. It was a cheaper brand of dress that my local thrift store had saved for me because the owner was like, this thing just, it was sparkly, it had your name all over it, and it was too destroyed for us to sell, but I saved it for you because I knew you'd want to cut it up and make it into something else, and ooh, yes, I love sparkle, y'all know sparkle is my favorite color. I started with the sleeves because I knew I was cutting out stars, which are not particularly big. And that way, if I decided I wanted to cut some bigger pieces, I would still have the bigger portion of the dress intact. I cut out this little star pattern and I'm just gonna go around this material and cut little stars. This sparkle material is super hard to cut, fair warning. It also will slightly destroy your scissors. So make sure you are using sharp scissors, but also not your favorite scissors. I had just laid the stars down to see how they looked and then I went back and decided that they actually needed a lining under them to really give them that like pop of sparkle because they were kind of just blending in a little bit too much. I'm taking the lining from the dress sleeve and I'm going to cut out additional star patterns to put underneath the stars. And this step probably didn't even do anything. It just made me feel like the stars popped a little bit more. And here's what all five of the stars look like. And then I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm doing a zigzag stitch all the way around all of the stars and kind of like a matching champagne colored thread. This matching of the thread took me absolutely forever. And the first star that I started with, just to make sure that I could even sew through sequin material, cause I wasn't sure if that was possible, was a pink star and I ended up hating the way it looked. So then I got to seam rip that star out later. If you can't match your thread the first time, just Keep looking because you will find a thread that matches. The champagne color thread matches the stars, not the pink background, but it just blends really well and looks so cute and I'm so happy I decided to change it. After the stars are complete, I'm gonna cut out a back lining piece for the inside of the hat. That way the interfacing is not showing. I just thought this would make it look better on the inside. And then I just did a simple stitch all the way around it. This material is just extra material I had from Joann's. It's nothing special. 
And then I'm doing a straight stitch all the way down just to make that cone shape locked in place. An optional step is that I took mine to my serger just to give it a nice completed look. You can also do a zigzag stitch if you do not have a serger or cut it using a pair of pinking shears. Once that straight stitch is done, I'm then going to flip it around and this hat is starting to take shape and look so cute. Now for the brim part of the hat. This is why I said that the pattern was optional because when I was looking at her witch's hat, I realized that her hat is actually an oval, but all of the hats that I have are circles and I really like the circle shape more than the oval shape. So I decided to take my hats and draw out their outline as a giant circle and then add a little bit of seam allowance around it because I was just like, I really don't like the oval. I really want it to be a nice big giant circle. So again, that's why I'm like, mm, pattern's kind of optional. It didn't really, I didn't really need to buy it, but it was also only $2 from Joann's. So I'm taking more of the Forever 21 pants and I did have to sew them together again to make this shape. And that's gonna be the bottom of the hat. I'm then going to also cut out a matching piece of interfacing. So that way, again, this hat will have more stability because these pants, they don't have anything, but they're super soft. So I'm gonna cut out both the inside circle and the outside circle of the interfacing and again you can see that rough texture versus the smooth texture on the interfacing and here are the stars on the brim nicely laid out i'm going to do the same zigzag stitch around these as i did before and then i'm going to take some more extra material this material is different than the inside lining because i did not have enough lining to do either piece so that's why they have a slightly different sheen i'm going to just cut out the same type of lining situation for the brim of the hat. I'm then going to sew a straight stitch all the way around this and flip it inside out. In this next step, I'm sewing a channel all the way around the outside of the hat because I'm gonna add some wire to the brim of the hat to give it more stability and make it so it actually will hold up. So I'm using this 12 gauge wire on all the other tutorials I saw. They said to use 14 gauge, but I went to every craft store in my area and could not for the life of me find that gauge of wire. So this is gonna have to do. And most of them recommend sewing bias tape around the wire as your last stage versus what I'm doing, which was incredibly difficult. Trying to get the wire to go inside the channel was so much harder than I ever thought it would be. And I just struggled so much, but eventually got that to work until I realized that I needed to add the top of the hat to it, which totally makes sense. But because the wire brim does not bend and you also don't wanna bend it because then it'll always stay bent, it just made this sewing portion an interesting struggle. So as you can see, I've got my sewing machine to the side, like off the side of my table with the armpit hole thing removed. So I am just absolutely struggling here, trying to pull the hat around without bending the wire. Eventually I got it, but it was much more difficult than I thought it would be. So I'm not really sure what the easier way to do this is, but this hat looks beautiful when finished, so it's all worth it. this video I hope it helps you make your own DIY witch's hat I absolutely love this hat and think it's so fabulous to wear I hope you guys have a fantastic week and if you didn't magically turn that like button from white to blue it is your opportunity to do that now I hope you guys have a fantastic one I'll see you in the next video bye